enthusiasts that have been presenting here right now. We are going to get some uh, keynote addresses for more experienced people, for the people that already are like dealing with uh, startups and innovations for a very long time. So it's my pleasure to invite on the stage Mr. Robert Collins, State Secretary of the Ministry of Economy. smart cities 
by bringing together people, processes, data, and network connections. It provides the critical factors that will underpin the local innovation ecosystem, which in turn can create sustainable solutions through the introduction of smart products, services, and systems. Whether it is smart security for homes, energy saving, smart street lighting, smart travel solutions, or assisting living for elderly or infirm, smart devices collecting data, providing real-time information to one another, and taking action automatically will change the way we live, work, and play. Examples from all over the world show how the smart city concept can improve the quality of life for citizens, increasing the competitiveness of local industry, and make cities better places to live in. There is more than we can do at the EU, regional and the national level, to facilitate this digital revolution in the Internet of Things. We will use opportunities under the Slovak presidency of the Council of the EU to drive forward efforts to deliver a single market in Europe and to encourage a, a thriving ecosystem, putting innovators at the heart of policy making. That's very, very important also for us and uh, <clears throat> one part of the informal council meeting that will take place in Bratislava in, in two weeks will focus just on this. To be able to bring the the future-proof regulation or the regulation for the new businesses that will actually make them easier to grow and make them easier to develop new things. We need to do more to support interoperability and the seamless integration of devices from different manufacturers through the creation of common standards. As smart devices collect more and more data on individuals, we will also need to consider how to address legitimate concerns about privacy and data protection. I am confident that we can create the right framework that will help the IoT to thrive across Europe, that we can provide opportunities for innovators to develop new business models. The IoT can help us to address challenges around climate change, health and sustainable growth, but above all to improve the lives and prospects of European citizens. You will have an opportunity today and tomorrow to hear from people involved in creating the IoT, to exchange knowledge, ideas, and importantly, to find new opportunities. So thank you for inviting me, and I wish you a fruitful debate. In case you would need, in also in the future, any help from uh, Slovak Ministry of Economy, you are always very welcome to contact us, and we will try to be fully at your disposal, maybe to help you with the problems that you might be facing, whether it's a regulation or the other issues that you have, like, like funding or whatever will be necessary to be done. So thank you. Uh, another interesting topic and speech will be held by um, by Padu, a group uh, CFO, French officer of uh, Group Baltech. Insights, but uh, let's say also perform in this kind of uh, uh, new era. So, first of all, uh, just a few words about Vatec. So, Vatec is a global digital agency, it's a company for about uh, 2,000 people in uh, multiple countries. But to a certain degree, we, we could uh, say that we are still a, a startup, or we can call it a, a scale. But uh, we have made a quite amazing journey in the last five years. Uh, in fact, we took the control of this company in uh, 2010. It was uh, Vatec was a kind of a sleeping princess, mostly in France, uh, less than 70 million, 65 million euro revenue, and half of that was in France. And we have decided to, to let's say, take control of this company because we consider that it was the best platform to develop a truly global uh, digital agency, quite successful. And in five years, we grew from uh, less than 70 uh, million euro to a company that was on the verge of 250 million. Uh, Euro this year, uh, with the growth which is mostly organic. 
uh, with 85% uh, of the activities done in, uh, outside of France, USA, uh, Germany, and England. So it's definitely possible to build, even in this uh, environment of new technologies, uh, a global leader uh, outside from Europe. So, sorry. I would like first to, to share with you this uh, couple of words of uh, Ted Goodin. Uh, Ted Goodin is a, is a kind of a character. It's a guy that has been able to uh, identify some uh, new revolutions uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this world. And uh, what he's saying here is very important. Industrial age is ending and the new economy is emerging. And all the advances that have been made from industrial default have been mostly extracted. What does it mean here? It's the end of the industrial revolution in the sense that everything that could be extracted from uh, the efficiency of scale has been done. So now, let's say, uh, leaders, companies, need to be focused on something else, which is establishing the right dialogue with a new consumer. And a new consumer that, you call it millennial, you call it uh, the Z generation, uh, they want to talk to you guys, they, they want to cooperate, they want to co-partner with you in your product, in your range of products. And that requires a complete new stage of organization. And this is what it's saying here. I mean, building connection is more important than designing new factories. And keep that in mind. Connection means something very different from just, let's say, an hardware, software. It, it means something which is related to experience. And we call it the economy of experience. We have entered in a new era. Harvard Business Review, I advise you guys, if you have the possibility to read what they've said about this new economy, Define that as really the new stage of the economy, where it is much more important to establish the right experience for your end consumer than doing anything else. And what does it mean? It means something obviously for the B2C market, but also for the B2B market, because uh, don't forget that a B2B client is also a B2C client. It's somebody that uses, let's say, Uber or any other apps or any other services where, let's say, with one touch button, he can buy, he can have access to a service, and the service can be rendered pretty easily. So don't forget that. Whatever you're going to build in a B2B environment, if it's not made for being used by these guys, this millennial, this G, G, uh, Z generation, you will lose something. So this is the new economy. And in this new economy, a brand is not sufficient to survive. And we can see that with many companies that have disappeared. Being big is not enough, too. I mean, uh, give you an example, uh, Blockbuster company, I don't know if you know Blockbuster, Blockbuster used to be a very giant retailer in the USA, more than 10 million, uh, 13,000 employees, uh, a bit more than uh, 1,000 stores. And these guys, they were, what, what they were doing, they were providing videos, you know, on the, on the CD room, etc. And it happened that a young company, Netflix, came to see the top management of this company, Blockbuster, saying, hey, you know what, we have kind of a new services. There is a possibility to consume videos just by clicking on a button on your sofa. And the guy from uh, Blockbuster said, Hey guys, we do consider that this experience of taking your car, driving your car, going to a store, buying something, come back to the house, view uh, today to view the video, but a better experience than being on the sofa, press a button and consume it. And these guys, these 10 billion companies have disappeared in, in two years. Chapter 11 after chapter 11, they go bankrupt. And Netflix, as you know, at this very moment, uh, valued something like $40 billion. So this economy of experience is a true reality, okay, that will change everything. And each company in the world are facing these two challenges. And in this environment, there is something which is important, being consistent, being seamless. The type of experience you're going to build needs to be pretty cohesive. Whether you access to it through a mobile, or through a connected object, or inside a store, or inside your car, if it's not consistent, if the content you're providing is not the right one, personalized, if the person is not recognized, you will miss something. This millennial that I mentioned are, by the way, the guy that have spent most of the money, you know, in the, what we call the Black Friday in the USA. It's, it's a period of time in, let's say, just one weekend, where Americans are spending more than 100 billion okay, in two days. This year, 216, even 215, sorry, the billionaires were the first to spend, uh, let's say, 60% of the total expenses during that period of time. So these guys are your main clients. Because these guys are working also, these guys have kids, the Z generation, and all of these people are consuming 
this way, with, let's say, experiences where they want to be recognized. They want to be sure that the information they're given to you through the mobile or through the connected object is something that we keep in mind. And the new services you're going to offer, take that in account. And obviously with innovation, we, we mentioned it, uh, startups are the heart of the innovation, and even, let's say, for big companies, uh, innovating is a, is a, is a kind of a sole thing to consider, and it's possible. I, I remember that somebody on the stage this morning saying that, okay, big company can't, can't innovate. They can, sometime. Uh, take Nestle, for example. You know, Nestle, they've created uh, something pretty brand new at that time but that was called Nes um, Nespresso. That has been quite a success. And uh, in 10 years from the date of the creation, Nespresso is currently providing most of the EBITDA of the Nestle group. And it was a true startup inside the company. So much a startup that everybody inside Nestle wanted to kill the beast. Because they were saying, hey, it will change everything. It will change the PLA, it will change the, uh, the way we organize our channel, etc. So we can't let this kind of thing survive. So, yes, big companies are not exactly made for integrating innovation, but they learn, and, and they learn fast, and they have means. So it's also interesting for startups working, let's say, in the B2B environment to consider that, because they are really daring to move, and they want to get access, let's say, to this innovation that could be, for them, an element of survival. So let's, let's go for some example. So IoT connected object, which is the, the very meaning of, uh, of this event today. Uh, what I'm saying here is, IoT connected objects are part of something bigger. They are part of the economy of experience that I'm mentioning here. Which means that you can't invent something IoT connected object if you are not taking seriously this experience part. Because you will have consumer B2B, B2C that will have and will require to have this kind of a global experience around that. And if you are not able to build, let's say, a complete ecosystem, ecosystem could be partner, the user journey, whatever you call it or the platform to perform, you won't succeed. And, and that is, is very important. And I will give you some examples. And it refers also to uh, one of the comments from one guy was mentioning the business then, or, or at least what you are building needs to be the correct answer to a need or to a lack of something in any type of business. Because generating something from out of space that will meet customers Except Steve Jobs, I've not seen so many people be so successful in creating something that nobody wanted. Okay? So, at least, being able to identify that is, is the true answer. Uber, again, is an example. They, they've seen that there were a hole in the experience for people that would like to have a taxi driver. Taxi driver was made for taxi driver, not for consumer or taxi driver. So as soon as they've been able to crack the code of what could be the perfect experience for consumer that disrupts the tool market all over the place. So let's go for um, the car industry. Car industry are facing big, big challenges. We speak about uh, an industry that had been uh, founded uh, 100 years ago, where everything was about the entire system, the glow system, etc. And now we speak about <coughs> automated cars with electricity. Electricity, quite boring. Means for this, Auto and uh, manufacturer, when they used to build everything, the sole thing that will stay will be the brake. Great. And what happened inside the car? Which is also the next experience, because the car is becoming probably uh, a kind of a new theater with this automotive car. At least you still need to, to, to look at the road. Uh, we've seen this experience with Tesla last week. Uh, the car will, will become a, a movie a theater. Moving, by the way during hours, so you need to be a part. So they said the experience inside the car is something important. But there is another dimension. Nobody wants to buy a new car. In Europe, at this very moment, the medium age of buyer of new car is more than 50 years old. Which means that for all of these cars industry, there is sooner or later no consumer for buying a new car. Except leasing company, except rental companies, nobody's buying car. And for the millennium, that I was mentioning is even more than that. So, in this case, we have tried to work on a, on a new solution to give opportunity to this new generation to share power. And to do that, we've, we've, we've built an IoT system. In fact, we've been able to transform any regular car as a collected object in the Internet of Things. And I will let you discover what we've done. 
Я усал. Is uh, being possible because we have, we have developed these uh, components, IoT components, uh, hardware inside the car that give the possibility and different type of possibility. First, you can access to any information inside the car and share with the app on the mobile, give to the family or the friends that could share this car, or how many gas left, uh, where the car, etc., etc. So, which is one part of the uh, of the experience. The second part of the experience, because of the ID can we have you know the key that has been installed. Uh, we have also the possibility to define exactly at the right second who is driving the car, and based on that, the monthly fee will be established within this family and friends to have the possibility to consume and to pay exactly for what they've used the car. So, again, here the IoT is, is part of a, a global platform or a global experience to render a specific services, which is nobody wants to buy a new car at this very moment. So we have launched this experience in Stockholm, in Sweden, Obviously, because the Swedish people, as you know, are people that like to share, that like to be a part of the community. So it was, let's say, the, the right move for Audi to try to identify what would be the next step of them, for them, uh, the next step for uh, how to be a car manufacturer in this kind of a new era. So that's one first example. The second example I wanted to share with you was uh, another one, which is also in the sport industry uh, for a company uh, called Adidas. And the, the idea here was. Uh, same, same type of story, uh, we, have a, we have a store, uh, in this store we are selling tons of products, uh, definitely not connected, uh, classical sneakers, I mean these sneakers has been uh, uh, designed uh, 20 years ago, so the question was how to, to still enhance the experience inside the store, how to give more than just let's say uh, a classic sneakers, and that was done and also possible through uh, IoT. Shoes and uh, what makes these shoes so different from the other ones. 
So again, here we see IoT as an element that can enhance any type of experience and any type of regular product. So the last example I would like to show you is, is something related to the mall. Uh, the mall industry in the USA or North America is something like um, six, 600 uh, billion uh, activities. So it's massive. But it's currently dying, or to a certain degree suffering quite a lot. Among the 1,000 malls that you will find in the USA, uh, 400 are supposed to die. And by the way, I don't know if you have been the, uh, able to, to find that already on the internet. There is uh, uh, people that are taking pictures of malls that have been uh, uh, fully abandoned uh, in the middle of uh, nowhere in the USA. And you have uh, I mean, something like a uh, hundred uh, thousand square meters uh, fully abandoned where you see trees, land, etc. So this is an industry with, which is uh, at this very moment quite separate and in pain. And so the idea here was also how could we use a couple of different things, IoT solution you will see, uh, connected glass fronts, uh, I beacon to transform an experience in a store where people at this very moment average spend less than five minutes, go to buy only one thing and leave. So the idea here was how to combine these different technologies to make a, a real difference. seen their sales increase by 40% during the holidays. The future is different. Retailers are suffering from important drop in sales. Customers still feel the stress of shopping during the holiday season. There's a shortage of gift ideas. Malls and stores are overcrowded. But maybe, just maybe, it's time we offer an integrated shopping solution. Buy online or in-store. Help shoppers to make the choices they want and reduce the stress of the holiday gifting season. This is how we make magic. A new experience was engineered to help people have a smoother, faster, and smarter shopping journey. Valtech created innovative triggers to change shopping behaviors. We connected all the dots from digital to physical. The goal was to create a seamless customer experience across all channels while having a positive impact on foot traffic at destination. We simply disrupted the way people shop during the holiday season with an online store with curated products, with social and traditional media campaigns, with cutting-edge technology to interact with shoppers such as Connected Glass, a seasonal pop-up shop, and a five-minute pick-and-collect customer service with valid parking to a seamless rapid in-store payment. The one-stop gift shop is a time-saving solution and a new customer experience. message for all of you and all the startups involved in this IoT uh, revolution is always think about the global experience. Think about how to close the experience gap which are facing most of your customers uh, from B2C to B2B and that will be the, the, the key really to, to succeed in this new era. Thanks to all of you. So uh, right now is the time to go, it's a time to have a lunch break, but before we go for lunch, uh, I would remind you this slide about you know, the startups, startup pitches. I'm going to vote for Mr. Padu, he wants this kind of startup <laughs> for this contest. Uh, about the lunch, uh, we are going to have a lunch at two floors, so if there is one restaurant here on this top floor and one on the ground floor, so feel free to choose each one. Or maybe choose both of them if you are very hungry. And we will uh, meet here in one hour. Uh, so we as we meet at 1 p.m. Feel free to go to the stands to talk to the startups, change the business cards, offer the new connections, 